Hi, I'm Tyler. I'm going to show you how to use the Scratch programming language to control Rocket League. This assumes that you've already done the installation, which I covered in a different video. If you haven't, then look for the link in the description. So, this is Scratch. It's a programming language based on arranging these blocks in certain patterns, and we can use it to control this car inside Rocket League. The important thing to understand is how to control the car. And that's done with all these blue blocks right here. Let's take a look at this block that says set throttle. Throttle is how much your car accelerates. And if I set it to one, then it means full acceleration and negative one means backwards. So if I click this, it's going to set the throttle right here. This is a little indicator that says what's being sent into the game. And you can see the car started driving. If we change this to a negative one and tap this again to set the throttle, this goes to the left to the negative and the car goes backwards. And if we go back to zero and tap it, then the car stops. So let's try out these other blocks too. Let's try steering. If we set steering to one and tap it, you can see the wheels just moved. Now they're turning to the right. Let's turn on just a tiny bit of throttle. I'll tap that, now it's on. Now you can see it's steering to the right. You can set steering to the left like this, you tap it and this changes and now the car is steering left. Those are the, uh, the very basic ones. I also want to show you jump and boost because those are really fun. So jump is a bit tricky. This is the indicator for whether we're pressing jump down. I'm going to click right here and now it's checked and once I tap it this is going to light up. Okay and now the car jumps. Now notice that it's still lit up, and if I tap this again, it's not going to jump. And the reason for that is that this is continuously lit up. It's like if you're holding a video game controller in your hand and holding down the button for like five minutes. You can't expect it to keep jumping. It's only going to jump the first time you press it. So if you want to jump again, you have to let go of the button by unchecking this and tapping it. And once I tap it, this will not be lit up anymore. And now we've let go of the button. And now we're going to turn the button back on when I tap this. Like that. OK? And what else? Boost is similar, but it's not as tricky. Uh, boost is either on, like that, or it's off. And we've got some other blocks here, but I don't want to cover them quite yet. First, I want to explain how this forever loop works, because that'll really help you get this thing to drive around the way you need it to. So when I was showing you before, I was moving the steering, and then nothing happens yet until I click it, and then the steering changes. But once we run this program by clicking the green flag, it's like somebody's automatically clicking this over and over and over and over again for me, about 60 times a second. So when I move this slider, it starts changing throttle immediately, and it starts changing steering immediately without me having to tap anything. So I can yank this back and forth and the car steers around. And that's going to be really useful for us. And that'll work as long as this is glowing yellow. If you accidentally click somewhere and it, it stops glowing, then the car isn't listening to me anymore. You can see that this isn't moving and nothing happens here. But to get it to glow again, you can either tap here or click on the green flag. And now it's going to listen again. It'll change all the time. So if you want steering to be updated automatically, constantly, 
put it inside a forever block and make sure this is lit up yellow. Okay, and the uh, same goes for things like boost. If it's inside this forever block, then I can just check it, and I don't have to tap because it's basically tapping this for me over and over. You can uncheck it, turn off boost, turn it back on, and same goes for jump. You can check it, it jumps once. We're still holding the button down, so we have to uncheck it and recheck it to jump again. Like that. So those are the basics of how to drive. And the next thing to understand is that there's other ways to steer besides just moving the slider around yourself. You can actually put a little bit of programming right inside this box. And look what we have here. These are going to be very useful for that. This block figures out how many degrees you have to steer left or right to get to a certain target. And by target, I mean something like the ball. This is giving me the location of the ball, which is being tracked right here. If I put this inside here, it's like I'm saying, how many degrees do I have to steer to get to the location of the ball? And if I tap this, it'll tell me a little preview of how many degrees. So right now it's negative 160. Now it's negative 133, and it's changing because the car is moving around and the ball is moving around too. Tap it again, now it's only negative 53 because we're kind of pointing towards it in that moment. If we move this right inside steering, then it will start steering automatically based on the numbers that are coming out of this block. And since it's inside the forever block, it's going to be like somebody's clicking it really fast. So I'm going to put this right in here. And now it should be steering automatically after the ball, and there it goes. There's a whole lot more you can explore with this, but for now I'll leave that up to you. Hope you have fun, and I'll see you next time.